Okay, I'm, he, he's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Put him in. He's ready, Coach. As you start to, start to look back, I, I know we're still a year, year and a half almost away right. from your, your retirement. But what are you most proud of? What do you think that you and the entire system has done well over the past years? Oh, I think um, a large number of things. I think we've stabilized financially. Um, I think we've uh, made great progress academically as a system. Um, I think we, um, I think the community has a greater appreciation of us. I think the media treats us really well now. <laughs> right? Funny when you announce that you're retiring. With the system, so, so obviously UH Manoa is the largest. I mean, it's the biggest right. school. Um, what do you think of UH West Oahu? Every time I go out there, I see it growing. It's getting bigger. Are you proud of what's being yeah, done at West Oahu? Yeah, so um, West Oahu has grown up over these past 10 years for sure. Um, they also have the, um, a very large percentage of online students. So they serve um, students all over the state through their online programs as well as what they do uh, in, in West Oahu with their, you know, they've got a couple of signature programs that are really special. Was it important for, to, for that to be where it is? Because so many folks on, the, on that west side are sort of disadvantaged. And for them to have a school much closer, not have to drive two hours, it's a, it's a benefit for that leeward coast, isn't it? Yeah, there was a, a study done, uh, it was called the Second Decade Project under um, Vice President Linda Johnsrud, who actually spent some time at the UH West Oahu campus as a chancellor. But as Vice President of the system, she led a study looking at um, population growth, uh, educational need uh, across the entire state, and the two areas that had the greatest need we're West Oahu and West Hawaii. So I'm really proud. Now we have you know, a vibrant UH West Oahu campus, and we've got the Palamanui uh, campus of Hawaii Community College in Kona, um, beautiful facility also. And I know my friend Dan Meisensaw likes to talk about this. The community college system that we have in place is pretty darn good. There's a lot going on that's really positive at those different facilities. Yeah, the different community areas. colleges are great, so they offer um, incredible opportunities for um, either students fresh out of high school or adults who want to come back for retraining and upskilling. They're an open-door policy. So if you're not really prepared for your educational program, the community colleges are a great place to get prepared, even if they don't offer the program, and maybe help you prepare to transfer into one of the universities. But their their trades programs, their liberal arts programs, you know, the culinary programs. Um, are just amazing. Uh, the campuses work together, and they've also been doing um, some really creative things uh, as the enrollment has shifted around between the campuses, sharing classes between each other. Um, they have a lot more online now after the pandemic than they did before, and they've also really been uh, ramping up their early college programming for high school students, which is one of the best ways we've found to get more of our public high school kids interested in college, attending college, and succeeding in college. When COVID hit, did you see a number of non-traditional older people come back for sort of retraining or because COVID was really life adjusting for a lot of people that all of a sudden saw pr their profession dry up and, or, or, or change in some way? So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, nationally, we didn't see a whole lot of people going to school during the COVID uh, pandemic the way we did during the last recession. Um, and we think that's just because people didn't want to be around large groups of people, mm -hmm. you know, during the pandemic. But we are seeing some growth. And the community colleges, again, to return to that, have been extraordinarily successful at attracting federal funding, chasing it down and earning it, uh, to provide free workforce training for people throughout the islands to help them, again, kind of upskill or career shift uh, from what they've been doing to what they would like to do. Last question. Stuart would be happy to hear that. <laughs> Have the Lahaina wildfire, has that impacted anything on Maui as far as the University of Hawaii system goes? Um, so the none of our facilities were hurt, but um, lots of our students lost... Um, may have lost homes, um, impacted family, friends, lost their car, lost their job. So we're really working very hard to help our the students we have be able to continue their education. And, and we have 
you know, like 100 Lahaina students here at UH Manoa, but they're also scattered throughout the system. Uh, we also want to help make sure that the high school kids on Maui um, do not despair and understand that higher education is still their opportunity for a better future. But lots of service to the community, um, especially out of Maui College, the cooking 9,000 meals a day and during the heat of when people really needed to be fed. Even now, they were, last time I checked, they were producing about 2,000 meals a day as part of the culinary curriculum, great learning experience. But we've also got people from our medical school who are providing direct assistance. Um, we have scientists doing water quality testing, ocean water testing. We have people starting to look at wildfire resilience. So just a whole range of activities across the university really trying to help both with the immediate needs of the people of Maui and, and beyond who were impacted, but also help um, the Lahaina community and the entire state understand how to um, be better at preventing wildfires and being resilient in the face of climate change. Thank you, sir.